Welcome everybody to Cloud Innovators Live. We're here at Digital Transformation World in Copenhagen and I have with me Matt Anderson from Google Cloud. Matt, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Matt Anderson, part of Google Cloud, part of our telecom vertical. I lead our industry solutions team. So Matt, we had some pretty exciting news. Um, we actually just officially signed the ODA manifesto. That's right. It is all about open ecosystems. It's something we've been doing for a while at Google, and now we're bringing this into the telco world? Yeah, interoperability of applications, of workloads has always been a problem in telco, and that's really what ODA Manifesto is about solving for. Well, and when you're growing through acquisition and, and organically, you're going to have a lot of different systems that need to communicate, so breaking down those silos is critical. How does open digital architecture fit into this, and what have we done, and what are we doing there? Yeah, if you think of Open API Manifesto as, as kind of a framework piece of paper of how it's outlined, the open digital architecture is really the implementation of that framework of how do I define what the components are? How do I define and ensure that we can support cloud native applications, microservices based architectures? All of that to really take telcos to the future. You know, more about how do I enable the telco to accelerate transformation, accelerate you know, their digital uh, brand in the marketplace and really drive value off of those ecosystems versus spending money on classic IT ops of integrating applications and that's really what the value and the benefit of ODA is. So when we look at ODA then and we look at the Canvas project that we just put on, on stage over here, what are, who are we working with and what are some of those uh, benefits that the customers and partners are finding? Yeah, so we had three partners as part of the ODA Canvas, call it a proof of concept that we completed. Um, they were Ericsson, network equipment provider, they, and also an OSS BSS provider of, of, of applications. Um, they brought their product inventory management components. Uh, Matrix, which is a charging engine, uh, cloud native application once again, you know, I would say one of the front runners from a cloud native uh, you know, charging and billing perspective. And then finally, we had a customer, Orange, the, the French telco. Um, they brought their product catalog as part of the ODA Canvas. And you know, the, the whole goal of this was how do we make these things work and will they work on the ODA Canvas, which sits on GCP? And does the hyperscaler really have a role to play there? So what are the use cases that we started to look at and started to study? Are there, how do we place value on that? And kind of how did that Canvas unfold? Yeah, I mean, the whole goal of the Canvas is to ease the interoperability of applications from third parties. If you look at OSS, BSS, the telcos, there's typically tens to maybe hundreds of vendors that participate in that space. So making sure they all interoperate, as well as you know, adhere to your ecosystem and the rules that you want to provide from, from you know, the ecosystem that you operate becomes a very complex endeavor. The Canvas is trying to drive standardization around that. Um, by putting it on GCP, you get all the benefits of cloud native capabilities, you get all the monitoring, you get all the control plane activities. All of that comes out of box, and then being able to scale infrastructure to the demand is also you know, a huge benefit of that. So really the goal was, can we deploy those three sets of applications yeah. on the canvas in a cloud native way and have it operate the way we think it should operate? So it, you just unfold the software and throw it up there and it all works? Yeah, and it's no, actually that easy. That, that, no, it, it, it is not that easy. <laughs> There were no hiccups, what was going on? What has what Orange said, what has Matrix said? What did, did Ericsson do as they participated in this? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think what we heard from all three was, this is really that easy. And this is what the TM Forum has been telling us from the beginning, like ODA Canvas is really a plug and play architecture. We had one minor line of code with our managed Prometheus uh, code that we had to modify for the Canvas to, to, to deploy properly, but that took all of about 10 minutes to fix. Once we had that, we just used the Helm chart that ODA comes with, deployed it, turned up the three clusters, gave it to Matrix. Matrix deployed their application. Their engineer said, holy cow, I can see service mesh here. I can never see service mesh that easily. Uh, Ericsson the same way. I can look at the status of everything. I can look at the service mesh. I can look at monitoring logs of how things are all working together. And it really just worked out a box like a, a true plug and play. So service meshes, monitoring, more consistency, enabling you to have speed. Yep. It, it creates a really good story. Exactly. So Matt, anything else that you would like to leave us with from an ODA perspective? 
think there's going to be more to come there, right? It's still, you know, call it its infancy in terms of capabilities. We need to build more services with the TM Forum and with our customers to really cover the gamut of, of what you're going to experience in the telco world. That's excellent. Matt, thanks for sitting with us. And thanks, everybody, uh, coming to you at Cloud Innovators Live here at Digital Transformation World. Mm -hmm.